fundamentally, how do we grow strengths of different kinds inside ourselves for happiness, skillfulness, effectiveness, moral commitments, and so the, and the rest of that. That's it's really a very bottom line thing. How do you how do you grow embodied strengths, really? And I just think it's a scandal the degree to which people in the growth industry, me included, formal systems, clinical psychology, coaching, uh, different teachings and trainings, there's been incredibly little interest in what people can actually do inside themselves to turn the experiences that they're having at the time, often hard-won experiences, into a lasting change in their body. And there's certainly some people who inadvertently grow and change. There's incidental learning. There are teachers who foster certain conditions like high-intensity wilderness programs or you know, things in certain kinds of settings that tend to foster greater uh, lasting change in the nervous system. But on the whole, uh, we broadly, as teachers, therapists, clinicians, and so forth, we're really great at helping people to have experiences, and we've been really lousy at helping them turn those experiences into lasting change inside. And so for me, that's, that's really a major theme I've been banging on about. For me, positive experiences are just a means to an end. It just happens to be that the process of growing various strengths is a two-step process. You must first experience it, and then you must, in a sense, internalize it. You must install it as a physical change. All right, most experiences of what we want to grow inside ourselves are beneficial, they're enjoyable. So their enjoyability is a marker of their value. But for me, my primary focus is growing strengths inside that endure, not on having positive experiences per se. It just happens to be that most beneficial experiences are hedonically pleasant. That said, there are key experiences uh, that are really quite neutral, like insight into impermanence. Is a, It's not particularly enjoyable or, or unpleasant. It's just kind of neutral and it's incredibly valuable. Also a sense of healthy remorse. Uh, I've been honestly a little preoccupied, I'm not sure why, the last couple of days uh, about a situation I had with a, a high school girl as a, when I was a senior that I initially invited to the prom and then I was so uncomfortable <clears throat> at, and shy at getting clothes for a prom and being in a dance and so forth that I kind of politely disengaged from going to the prom at all. But of course, I left her, you know, it, it was really wounding for her and I feel horrible about it. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm, you know, grappling with that right now. Uh, so anyway, feeling that kind of remorse or remorse at um, things we do with our kids, those are helpful experiences too and they're not particularly pleasant. So I just want to really highlight this point, Paul, that it's not so much about states that interests me. It's the general process of converting them into traits uh, that really matters. And then we carry with us those benefits over time.